So I'd like to talk about the book Len that you did. Can you explain uh, just briefly, briefly who Len Weinglass was and why you were attracted to him as a subject? Sure. Leonard Weinglass was um, probably one of the greatest criminal defense attorneys of his time. Um, he represented a lot of uh, political activists who were on trial. He represented the Chicago Seven. He represented um, Angela Davis. He represented Mumia Abu Jamal. Um, he represented Daniel Ellsberg. Um, and he was um, known for getting his clients off, frankly. Uh, he was good. Um, he tended to be eclipsed by more showy figures such as his sometimes law partner, um, William Kunstler, who was much more performative. But if you looked at the actual case law, you would find that it was Leonard who resulted in those legal victories that allowed his clients to go home rather than go to prison. And at the point when Leonard died, a lot of people lamented the fact that there was never a book about Leonard Weinglass. There was nothing, you know, that Leonard had sort of avoided personal publicity. He was a very private man. And his friends wanted there to be a book about Leonard and they hired me to do a graphic novel about uh, Lenny Weinglass, which because it was inspired by his friends, I used his first name, Len, because they always called him Len. He was a very likable person. And, um, you know, I um, had access to members of Leonard's family who had photographs of him, to friends of his, um, to some defendants. Um, Working on different cases was very different. For instance, the Chicago 7 case, there are more books about the Chicago 7 case than you could ever read. You know, and in fact, you know, Abby Hoffman, one of the defendants, has written a number of books about the trial in which he contradicts himself. Because what he wrote about the trial 20 years later is not what he wrote about the trial at the time. You know, Tom Hayden, the same thing, another defendant. Um, so there's a vast literature about the Chicago 7 trial, whereas some of the cases he did in the 1980s, there's almost no documentation. I had to go and find the defendants and interview the defendants and produce my own body of information about those cases. Um, so each chapter was kind of different. Um, but I found Leonard a very compelling figure because of his deep emotional commitment to his clients. He really cared about them as people. He was trying to protect them. You know, he was a very loving human being. Um, in fact, um, I found one video interview um, where he breaks down in tears because he's so happy that one of his defendants um, went home and was able to have a whole life. I was exonerated and, you know, had a marriage and a life and a family all after having been in danger of being convicted and executed, you know? Um, so I felt that Leonard was a very compelling and interesting man and one who hadn't uh, received the attention he deserved. And so I did a book about him. Um, at the behest of friends of his who wanted a, such a book done. So earlier in our conversation, we talked about how you never wanted to stick with a single style or a single medium. Uh, throughout Len, you actually used uh, different media for the different uh, chapters, including brush and ink. I believe one chapter is in Scratchboard. Yes, it's in Clayboard, actually. And, um, and uh, there seem to be a few chapters that are done in either charcoal or soft pencil. They were done in pencil and wash. And then others that were done in, uh, you know, flat black ink with an inker. Um, 
And, you know, those were because different parts of the story needed a different approach. And, you know, if you have, you know, a 30 page story in, you know, pencil and wash, you know, I think you're ready to look at another 30 page story in another medium. And um, I found that worked for me. Now, were there narrative elements that also led to your decision to choose the wash or the, uh, the scratch board or whatever? Sure. Um, I probably put more love into the chapter on um, Jimmy Simmons than any other chapter. Uh, and I used the clay board for that. That was partly because um, I did an extensive interview with Karen Simmons, Jimmy Simmons' wife, and she described things so beautifully. And I felt, well, I really need Scratchboard to describe this. I need that level of detail. Um, other chapters um, seemed like they needed a cleaner and more economical style. Um, I felt the chapter on Ellsberg um, a lot of what I had was photo documentation that had a lot of gray tone in it. And I felt I, the best way to work from that photo documentation was to bring that grayscale element into the artwork. So each chapter I approached somewhat differently. 